In this video, we will demonstrate how to administer intrapleural fibrinolytic therapy for pleural infections. This procedure will need to be performed with an aseptic technique. Before the procedure, verify that patient consent has been obtained. Junior residents or medical officers administering intrapleural therapy for the first time will need to be supervised by a senior doctor. We will demonstrate concurrent administration of intrapleural fibrinolytics in this video. The number of doses should be individualized based on clinical and radiological response to treatment. Consider holding off any anticoagulation therapy if it is reasonable to do so. Ensure that there are no contraindications such as major hemorrhage, intracerebral hemorrhage, recent major surgery, or trauma. In patients with high risk of bleeding, dose reduction, or a once daily dose may be considered. Step 1. Position the patient comfortably, with adequate space and easy access to the installation site. Step 2. Reconstitution of altar plays. Put on a pair of clean gloves and remove the protective caps of the vials containing dry substance altar plays and water for injection. Taking care not to touch the top of the vial, disinfect the rubber top of each vial with an alcohol swab. Remove the transfer cannula from its sterile packaging and carefully remove one cap off the transfer cannula, taking care not to touch the end of the cannula. With the sterile water vial held upright and standing on a stable surface, puncture the rubber stopper vertically in the center of the vial with the transfer cannula and press gently but firmly until flushed with the top of the vial. Remove the other cap from the transfer cannula. Hold the vial containing the autoplase dry substance, held upside down, with the center of its stopper directly over the exposed pin of the transfer cannula. Push the vial down from above, puncturing the rubber stopper vertically, with gentle but firm pressure. Invert the two vials and allow the sterile water to drain completely into the vial containing autoplase dry substance. After the vial containing water has been drained completely, remove the transfer device and the empty water vial. Swell the vial containing reconstituted alterplase gently to dissolve any remaining powder. The solution now contains reconstituted alterplase in a concentration of 1 mg per ml. Step 3. Prepare the equipment for intrapleural fibrinolytic therapy administration. You will need to prepare two Lua Lock 50 ml syringes, a 16-gauge needle, a 20 ml syringe with sterile saline and sterile drapes. In addition, you will need to put on sterile gloves, an apron, and a cap during the preparation and installation of intrapleural medications. For large bore chest drains, where a three-way stopcock is not available, chest drain clamps and additional catheter tip 50 ml syringes will be required. Step 4. Prepare the intrapleural medications. Clarify the dose of medications to be administered to avoid errors during preparation. In this video, we will be preparing and instilling 10 mg of alterplase and 5 mg of DNAs. With an assistant holding the vial containing reconstituted alterplase, draw out 10 ml of the solution into a 50 ml syringe. Further dilute with 20 ml of sterile saline to a final concentration of 10 mg alterplase in 30 ml of solution. Alterplase should be used immediately after preparation. If another dose of alterplase is required, the remaining solution can be kept refrigerated and used within the next 24 hours. Proceed to draw out 5 mg of DNAs in similar fashion. Dilute this with sterile saline to a final concentration of 5 mg DNAs in 30 ml of solution. Step 5. Prepare and clean the access site. For this video, we will be demonstrating intrapleural installation via a three-way stopcock. 
Clean around the access port using an alcohol-based solution, being careful not to contaminate your gloves during the process. Place drapes around the area as required. Step 6. Administration of intrapleural fibrinolytic therapy. For this video, a three-way stopcock with a one-bar valve is used, as shown in the diagram on the left. For this configuration, the direction that the valve is pointing towards is off. Always turn the stopcock valve or clamp off to the patient before removing the protective cover of the access port. This is to prevent inadvertent entry of air into the pleural space. After the syringe containing saline or medications to be instilled is connected to the access port, turn the clamp off to the underwater seal drainage system as shown on the diagram to the right. This will allow you to instill saline or medications into the pleural space. Remember to turn the clamp off to the patient before removing the syringe. For large bore chest drains with no three-way stopcock available, you will need to clamp the chest drain proximally, in other words, nearer to the patient before disconnecting the tube and attaching the catheter tip syringe. The clamp can be removed once the syringe is connected securely and medications can then be instilled. You are now ready to administer the intrapleural therapy. Turn the three-way stopcock valve off to the patient. Remove the protective cover of the access port and clean the exposed port using an alcohol-based solution. Connect the syringe containing sterile saline. Turn the stopcock valve off to the underwater seal drainage system and flush with saline to ensure drain patency. Check for leakage around the tube during flushing. Turn the stopcock valve off to the patient before removing the syringe. Next, proceed to administer intrapleural alterplays. Again, turn the stopcock valve off to the patient before removing the syringe. With concurrent administration of intrapleural therapy, this is followed immediately by installation of intrapleural DNAs. Finally, flush the chest drain with sterile saline to ensure complete installation of the administered intrapleural therapy. Clamp the drain and replace the protective cover of the access port. Step 7. Post-procedural instructions. After the drain has been clamped for one hour, unclamp the drain and leave the chest drain on free drainage, or apply continuous external suction if desired.